What's good, Commanders fans? Just wanted to do a quick video on five players who stood out in week one of Commanders training camp. Uh, the days are flying by, and we are one week away from preseason game number one against the Jets, August 8th as well, is the joint practice against the Jets at 10.15 a.m. So just want to give a schedule update. Also, uh, there is training camp uh, practice tomorrow, which is sold out. And then August 6th, training camp practice is sold out. We've seen 3,000 fans. We've seen Wale show up. A um, couple of celebrities. Somebody else was there yesterday. I can't remember who it was. I think Trey Lipscomb or somebody like that was there yesterday. But, um, yeah, it's been it's been packed. And it's, it's a lower capacity at uh, Ashburn. But training camp has been sold out the last couple of days. I have not been able to go to one. I don't even think after this, I don't think there's any more. Uh, after August 6th. I don't think they're doing any more uh, open training camps. I got to, I got to, looking at the website, I don't see any more, but hopefully they do that open practice at uh, FedEx this year and then I'll, I'll try my best to get down there. But um, other than that, yeah, it's been packed. It's been lit for sure. So let's get to the five standards. I, I can't wait for that joint practice though next week. I can't wait. That's going to be lit. I can't wait. Uh, and the Dolphins joint practice too. But let's get to five standouts here. I'm um, going to show some clips, of course, as I always do. Of some of the practice film, but let's start off with Mitchell Tinsley. Let's start, let's start off with a couple of uh, a couple of the receivers. Uh, Mitchell Tinsley has looked really, really good during practice so far. He's a guy that is fighting for a roster spot. Last year, he made it. He made the fifty three man roster. That Bengals game, <laughs> he had a, a breakout game, a show out, a showing out game, but didn't didn't get much playing time in the games, if any. Uh, and but he did make the roster as that seventh receiver, and I thought I thought he definitely earned it and deserved it. So practice so far, um, you look at the ankle breaker that he had yesterday. A lot of people were, were speculating that it was against Emmanuel Forbes, but it was actually against Caillou Blue Kelly, and it, it was on one on ones. I know one on ones is a, is a is a advantageous drill for the wide receivers, but still him making plays like that, um, and then also he made a play where he bagged. Mike Davis uh, per Jalen on Bleeding Burgundy and Gold. Make sure you guys uh, subscribe to him or check out his YouTube channel for sure and follow him. Um, Mitchell Tinsley bagged Mike Davis, who could potentially be our starting corner, you know, or his, his plan. They, the plan is for him to get a lot of reps out there for sure as well. He's made a couple big time catches. He's made a good connection with uh, Jaden Daniels. Uh, Zach Selby also said another really, really great catch from Mitchell Tinsley on seven on seven, kept both feet in bounds with tight coverage from Davion Davis. Um, so Mitchell Tinsley, he's been out there making plays, man. He had a really good day the other day. I think he's a guy that definitely deserves a spot on the roster. If not the roster, then at least the practice squad. I think he's a guy where, you know, we always say, you know, if he gets released, you know, there's a concern of somebody else picking him up. I don't, I don't know if that's going to happen for sure, but he's a guy that can play and get open. I think honestly, he really could kind of have that Cam Sims kind of kind of vibe to him, where if he just gets a chance, I think he can make some plays in the league for sure. Like he may be a fourth option or a fifth option, but I, I really think he can make a, make a way for uh, make some noise in the NFL for sure. So I think Mitchell Tinsley has definitely been a standout. Uh, moving on to another receiver that's fighting for a roster spot that was on the practice squad last year is Bryson Tremaine. Uh, Bryson Tremaine has made some big plays. Uh, John Kime tweeted out Bryson Tremaine makes a, a diving grab of a deep ball from Marcus Mariota. Uh, also, Logan Paulson has said that he's had a good connection with Jane Daniels, that Jane Daniels has really trusted Bryson Tremaine over uh, within training camp, and he's one of one on the roster. We don't have a lot of taller receivers. I think Bryson Tremaine's about um, 6'3", 6'4", has some speed to him, good hands. He's made a couple plays where he's leaped out and caught the ball and was able to... There was one play that they showed in the highlights where he beat somebody so bad to the point where he had all the separation and he had to make a diving grab to catch it, then got back up and ran for a touchdown. Like That's how much separation that he made on that play. So I'm going to try to put that clip up. But um, Bryson Tremaine has really, really made some good play. There. John Conn also said now Bryson Tremaine makes a, makes a diving grab of a deep ball from Mariota. Half the offense came running on the field to celebrate after... Also, Ben Stanley tweeted out that Bryson Tremaine holds in a long throw from Sam Hartman and Sevens, becoming a daily routine. So, and also, shout out to my guy, Protect Sports. He said, uh, Alameda Zacchaeus and Tinsley look good yesterday. Tinsley has looked really good. Alameda Zacchaeus is an honorable, honorable mention guy. He's been playing really well. I think his spot on the roster is a lock for sure. All right, let's move on to Brandon Coleman, standout rookie so far in training camp. Uh, he, he was a star one day, man. When they had the first day of one-on-ones, everybody was ranting and raving about how much, 
how good of a job that he did. He was undefeated on one-on-ones, you know, going up against our starters. He has gotten a lot of first-team reps. Right now, he is the front runner for our starting left tackle. A, you know, coming out as a third-round rookie, doing that. He's played some right tackle. So they've been moving him around and trying him at different spots. You know, it's really been him against Cornelius Lucas for the starting left tackle spot. And, you know, it's kind of his job to win right now, which is what a lot of the media has been saying. Dan Quinn uh, raved about him and said some really good things. Dan Quinn said that Brandon Coleman stood out for him on the O-line yesterday. Strong practice for the rookie. I uh, talked about that. The uh, Everybody's talked about the one-on-ones. He was undefeated on one-on-ones. Mitchell Tisler said that Brandon Coleman was the standout in these one-on-one drills. Showed good feet, strength, and ability to recover. He's done a good job against Frankie Louvu as well. There's some, there's been some times where he struggled as well, but he's done a really good job against Frankie Louvu and other guys that are going to be starters for this roster for sure. And, and, and impact defensive players on this roster. And you also see him after practice spending time with Bobby, Bobby, OG Bobby Johnson, the offensive line coach. So he's always there after practice uh, undefeated on one-on-ones. Also Grant Polson said that, he was enamored with Brandon Coleman. He's huge. He moved better than I thought. He got the left tackle starter reps today and looked like he belonged. Guard body with traditional left tackle arms and length. I liked him today. He also signed autographs for 45 minutes if you're into that. So nothing but good things we heard from Brandon Coleman. Um, doing a good job as a, as a starter. Started with starting reps. I'm intrigued to see what he does in the preseason. Also in the Jets practice, that's going to be a huge, huge test for them. They have a really, really, really good defense. But like I said before, my previous videos, like if if we find if we find our franchise quarterback and franchise left tackle in one draft, I mean Adam Peters is definitely gonna be one of the best GMs in the NFL for sure. I mean that that would just be a, a, a and he would be a steal in this draft. I mean he had you know up and down year last year in college, but the year before that when he was strictly at left tackle. That's when he really, really, really played well and uh, have had one of his better seasons in college. So um, the sky's the limit for Brandon Coleman, man. The sky's the limit for sure. Um, next guy is Frankie Luvu. I mean, that's an easy one, but I'm going to talk about him. I mean, Nick Javala says, day, take away from days one through six of the commander's camp. Frankie Luvu is fast as shiggity. Uh, you see the pass breakup that he made when they tried when somebody tried to make a, make a pass to Austin Eckler. He's been in there as a pass rusher. He's been making great uh, inside moves, being very disruptive. They talk about him as a vocal leader. Uh, Linnell Williams said Louvu with a sick inside move to beat Andrew Wiley. Would have been a quick pressure. So, you know, he made a nice move to beat Andrew Wiley. Had a nice peanut punch to force a fumble on Zach Ertz. So Frankie Louvu's just been all over the place, man. He really has. Um, also, shout out to Jalen again, bleeding burgundy and goal. He says, I will say this, this linebacker corp is effing filthy. Hella maniacs flying all, all over the place. Louvu jumped on, on, a, on a route. To Eckler like he was prime Deion Sanders. So Frankie Lubu, I mean, just to see good linebacker linebacker play from Lubu and Bobby Wagner is just gonna be a, it's gonna be a breath of fresh air. It really is gonna be a breath of fresh air. And this guy can really really get to the he can really get to the quarterback. He can really get to the quarterback. Uh, I think he's gonna be a chess piece that they use out there. They're gonna use him as a defensive lineman, of course, uh, and he, he he's gonna put pressure on the quarterback. So I'm, I can't wait to see. Him. We're gonna see a guy that can you know really really run with running backs out there too which we we just we've been struggling to find that at the linebacker position for sure for the past couple of years all right last guy is uh mike samer still dan quinn talked about mike samer still basically solidifying his spot at the nickel corner position uh mike samer still was locking up in the slot during red zone drills in one practice as well uh linnell also said that mike samer still has a chance to be one of the best slot corners in the nfl from day one, Nick Saban has said that. Um, Chris Sims has said that. Other other draft experts or college coaches saying that he pound for pound was the best guy in the college uh, in the NFL draft. Uh, hard over height. He's he's not scared to mix it up and tackle and be physical. He's been a tone setter in practice as well. Uh, bringing energy, five ten hundred eighty pounds. Working out with Daryl Green. He's just done all the right things. For sure. And uh, shout out to J Jamal for letting Mo tell it when he was one of the prices that effort won't necessarily show how good you'll be, but it can be contagious and a tone setter amongst your teammates. Mikey Samer still's effort every play stood out to him on Sunday and it stood out to also see Walls every practice. Shout out to see Walls as well. She uh, covers the Washington Wizards and uh, with Sports Illustrated. But Mikey Samer still, man. Um, yeah, Dan Quinn said he's settling in as the main slot corner. We haven't had, like, a really good slot corner. I know Danny Johnson was good, and then the last time we had a really good slot corner was, like, Kendall Fuller. Uh, but Mikey Samer still pound for pound. He can really be a lockdown corner. And he's not, and like I said, he's not scared to mix it up. 
you know, go up against off the linemen, uh, go in there and make a tackle, stop the run. So I'm excited to see what Mikey Sanders still does, man. I, I think he's going to be a very, very talented player. So those are the five guys right there. Olympia Zacchaeus is a uh, is a uh, honorable mention guy. Other guys are pretty easy to say. I mean, other than my honorable mention, I would say like Jordan McGee, the linebacker, Reed linebacker. He's had some standout moments for sure. And then um, Jahan Dotson, of course, is an easy one. Armani Rogers, guys like that. I think those are some guys that have stood out for sure. But you can go down the long line. But those are the five guys that have really stood out the past couple of days. If you guys think I missed anybody or anybody else, please let me know. Comment down below. Health of Commanders. Peace.